Meeple Town. Today we are looking up Top 10, baby! It's our top, top 10, 10 time. games yeah. all me, 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 me. Ba, 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 ka. time. Top 10, baby. That's, that's a good drum solo. How about well, that? Air drum and air guitar. One man band over here. I mean, that's what they call me. Uh, Johnny One Man Band. That's a... It's quite a lengthy nickname. Lengthy, lengthy nickname. Lengthy. All right, let's jump into this. You're first. You ready? Am I? Yeah. yeah. So you I think so. Because you, you went. The I'm number, pumped. I'm really pumped. He wants pumped the number one spot. Way. I do. He wants everyone to to just be so excited about his number one spot. A lot of and people might know I'm gonna tell you something. One. His number one is garbage. <laughs> it's not really. It's entitled garbage. That's the name of the the game. That is <laughs> number ten. Number 10 is a game that's better than Dean's number one. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. I've not played it, so maybe it is. And Dean has to play this game. I'm not going to lie, y'all. There's a few Uva games on this top 10. Number 10 is Caverna. Caverna. Caverna the Cave Farmers. It is, I'm looking here, ranked number 27 overall. What I really love about Caverna is the fact that Wow, there's a lot of different directions that you can go in this game. Now, if you are totally unfamiliar with it, it's simple worker placement. You're putting your worker onto a spot and you're getting some vegetables. You're plowing fields. You're uh, expanding your cave. But that's really the thing. The two things that I really like about Caverna is there is a massive board of buildings. The first time you play this, it's a little overwhelming. I'm not going to lie. So you got to play it twice. Are there dogs in this game? Yes, there are dogs. I know. I just told like you. Look at that. Like that. But there's like that. You see that there's a massive board of buildings. Huge. But the cool thing about that is that means the direction of the game can just be shifted so much. It has so much variability in this game. But on top of that, Dean, I think you'll like this. I love that you can take your dwarfs and give them a weapon and they go pillaging. Now, is it super thematic pillaging? Not really. It just, a, but after they pillage, they level up, Dean. If they were level seven, they were level eight now. Now they can go get better goods. I like that. I know you like that. Do they eat dogs in this game? What do the dogs do? What are, what are they for? <laughs> it smells like up dog in here. What is up dog? <laughs> I gotcha. That's, oh, wait, oh, never mind. That was unplanned. <laughs> it did look like it was scripted. It was That's not. an office reference whenever I laughed. And Are you going to answer the that. question? Do you actually what you eat, eat dogs? What do they you do? You do not eat dogs. Do they hunt? So here's one of the cool things about Caverna. If you do not like the tightness of Agricola, where it is pretty tight and difficult to feed your family, in Agricola, you can slaughter the hog. You can slaughter the sheep and you can eat it. But you can't slaughter the dog and eat it. So that's how I want to answer your question. But I think that's one of the reasons. Excuse me if I spit a little bit. I yeah, think that that is one of the reasons you will like this pretty well because it is, I think, easy to feed your family, but you're giving up stuff to do it. Okay. So you're yeah. having that balance of, oh man, okay, I can feed them, but now which animal do I have to have to slaughter, Dean? Right now, right now, my my favorite Uva game is um, Fields of Arla, I think, and this gives me vibes of it. I actually think I might even like this. A bit I think better. you will. Um, and I like Agricola, but. But whenever I watch the videos when Caverna first came out, this is this is a disappointment for me that I've not played this one because I've been wanting to play it for a long time. Since it came out, you have. Yeah, since it came out, and that's twenty thirteen. Mm hmm. Yeah. It I is twenty twenty. I know. I remember watching videos on this, thinking, "Ooh, I would love that game" because I was into uh, Agricola at the time. Ah, I gotta play this one. That's a it's, disappointment. It's an excellent game. An I like the two-player game. game of this one, the uh, Cave versus Cave. Yeah, this is way better than I like Cave versus Cave too. Don't get me wrong for a quick two-player game, but this is way better. That's your number 10. That's it, what's your number 10? I can't talk about it. Oh, it's gonna be yeah. higher on your list. It's the only crossover in our top 10 games of all time, so get ready for that one a little bit later, so why don't you do your number nine? Wow, back to back. Oh, I threw it up there. Underwater Cities, how about <laughs> that? Underwater Cities is absolutely fantastic. Is this not, Dean? It is, yes. This the first time we played this together, mm -hmm. right? And it was like yeah. a, a nine out of 10 for me, which is really high. I think I rated that originally, but now it's like nine and a half, 10. Like the more I play this game, the more I recognize how amazing it is. I love the worker placement spots matched with laying the card of that color gives you that action. And sometimes you can't do it, and it's but it's so satisfying when you are doing it. It has huge production moments in this game. Every round you're not producing, but 
every, it, it shakes it up a little bit, but every several rounds you will do a production moment and you will go <laughs> I've never done that when I've played this game. I do it every single time. That's... And you will look at all these goods that you have and you'll be like, I can do anything. Anything is possible now. You like the art in this game? Yeah. Okay. You don't? I, I love the production of this game. It's not like my Some favorite. Some of the, the card art, art is not my favorite. It's not my favorite <clears throat> ever, but it's good. And Vladimir Suhi, he just is amazing, amazing designer. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. This is a, this is an excellent game. I really like this one. gives me gives me vibes of Terraform Mars. I slightly prefer that, but it doesn't mean that I don't really really enjoy Underwater Cities. The game's fantastic. You're right. Number nine, Underwater Cities. All right, my number nine is, uh, there's three games that could fit into this spot. Oh, I know what this is. This is uh, 51st State Imperial Settlers could fit easily in my top 50. Um, but I did I not S put -E them. I-S-E-P-O-T-I-N. That's right. But instead I put Empire, M Imperial Settlers Empires of the North as my number nine game. because Which is I the right answer. I think this is the best version of those games. However... I do think they're different games at the same time. Um, 51st State feels they are different very games. different. One feels very different. Even Imperial Settlers feels very different because you're playing through rounds and not uh, racing to a set of points like you in the, are in the other two. Um, but in this game, it is uh, engine building. You do have a little bit of worker placement in this one where you're putting your little disc on the, the wheel to give you resources. That's a good pick right there. That's... <laughs> um, you are um, playing your cards into your tableau and allowing you to take actions, and that's how you're going to get your victory points, usually by like trading and resources. But the thing I really like about this one and, and Imperial Settlers is how the different the trade, <laughs> how different the factions play out. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, you're going to start off with different resources, but also you're going to be um, the cards that you play are going to be very different. The actions that you take are going to yeah. feel very different. I really, really enjoy this game. I've been blown away by it. Um, we now have, I think, all the expansion stuff for this that we've got to get to the table and do some reviews of. But you go back on that. You'll see that. You yeah, solo. Oh, not the solo. I will no. talk about the solo. Go back and click on the uh, map. The map. So I got this out on the table since you're perfect timing this weekend or in a couple no uh, Sunday night, and Here it is. the Imperial Settlers map went out to the table, and my six-year-old was all over it. Daddy, daddy, can I play? And he had all the pieces and he was like sending the people out. Now, that is a beautiful looking map, by the way. It is. It I is. I will cool say art. a disappointment that I've had and I don't know enough um, of the direction that they're going to go. But Imperial Settlers came out with, um, uh, you know, these different factions that they have. And when Empires of the North came out, it came with this map and I thought, oh, you're going to see different factions. Well, we've seen the Barbarians, we've seen the Japanese, the Japanese, we've seen the Romans. All yeah. of those are in the base game of Imperial Settlers. I would really love to see some more of these. There's even yeah. alien spaceships on here. That would be just, crazy. Um, yeah, so I would like to see more. And I hope it's not just, you know, more like the Atlanteans and um, at, yeah, uh, Aztecs and mm -hmm. some of those other ones. Hopefully we'll see more than just that. Well, I did, speaking of solo we had up there, I did get to play the solo version for the first time a couple nights ago. Because my wife hasn't been playing games with me lately, she's cut me off, and so it's I'm. I've really been in my mind having all by myself, just going that song, just going in my mind, pretty much nonstop. It, so, where is this going? Is this, it... <laughs> it's going to go to the solo version. Was actually quite nice, by the way. Yeah, the solo version of this is is a lot of fun. This is the superior game by far. When I when I played this again the other night. Having those actions uh, really ramps up add, the game. It ramps yeah. up the game and it adds a, some thinkingness to it, especially how you can only go to adjacent actions um, and you have to spend food to be able to do that. So, like, you're like, I really want to go here, but then I really want to go to this spot over here, and I'm not going to be able to do that because you can only do two times on one mm -hmm. of the tokens or whatever. Different things like that are just, those are interesting calls. And not only that, but the sailing too. The sailing in this yeah. game is really interesting because you can pillage, you can. Um, conquer. Go to conquer. You can go to faraway lands, and they get you know you get better things for doing that. But you have to spend more resources to get that far. I really there are so many great aspects of this game. It's a really good game. Surprised that it's not on your list high yeah. because it's pretty purely engine building too. We'll see next year. Okay, it may it may make it. Okay, all right. And you haven't played this in a while either, as much as I, I had until the other night, and then I'd yeah. only play solo. So, all right, that is your number nine? Nine. My number. Eight, excuse me, sorry, I had a little something in my throat there, is 
Oh, you want it? BB. There we go. Brass, Birmingham. BB. Which is number three overall. So, hey, there we go. Uh, BGG is agreeing with me a little bit. Huh? Where was this on my list? 11? 12? I don't remember. How, I think I don't, it's just outside the top 10 for me. I don't care about your list. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. I really do, actually. Yeah, this game is just fantastic. Scroll your own picture. This I'm is... Not. <laughs> this is Mar yes, sorry. This is Martin Wallace's finest of games. Yep. The big thing for me in this game that I like about it the most is the player interaction, the positive player interaction. Yes. Uh -huh. The way that you're taking something from somebody and maybe Dean really needs that coal, but it flips over his tile. So he goes, ah, oh, but yes, I'd actually rather have the tile flipped over. You know, those kind of things just make this game so brilliantly fun. Uh, the way that it's divided into two ages really keeps me engaged wholeheartedly. Yeah. Like, I'm engaged through the first age, and all of a sudden, wow, all the canals are gone. Now we've got to lay tracks. And you're thinking, the first time you play this, you're thinking, man, how are we going to do all this again? Yeah. You are, if you've got it set up right and you've got some coal ready to roll. You know what I'm saying? And then you're like... Did you script that? It's like, no. you just like, it's just fun. Yeah. It's just fun to do that and like I'm all in this game it's like an hour and a half, two hour long game, and I'm always like, Wow, it's already the end of the first age. I wanna play it again. Then you're like, Wow, right I'm already done uh -huh. with the second age. Yes, wow, let's play this thing again. Yep. I love this game. My wife does not. It makes me sad. <laughs> all by myself. I think this game oh. has longevity in all it, by which in, in, I think this one could rise up for me even higher. Even though I've played this a bunch, it just it's it doesn't get old for me. That's I really, crazy. really enjoy this oh. game as well. I've Damn. only played Lancashire on the app version of the game, but I really want to try the physical copy of that because I think I would enjoy it too. I don't think I would like it as much as this, but um, I don't know. Time will tell. This is a great, great game. Oh, it's so good. It's my number eight. My number eight is a, another game like Imperial Settlers that is Everdale. <laughs> it's like really similar. Yeah, <laughs> so like To have similar. those games back to back means yeah. like this is your wheelhouse. It is. You I think love so. These games. I think so. I've yeah, I do have several card games on here, I guess. But Everdale again, your tableau building just like you are in Imperial Settlers. You actually have worker placement, which you you know kind of do in in Empires of the North as well. The production of this one is off the hook, um, but. I think the the card play in this is what really makes it shine for me. I, I enjoy how the cards play off of each other, and you have like for example, if you've got the um, if you've got the post uh, post office, then you can bring in your postal pigeon mm -hmm. into play um, instead of having to pay those costs. And I really enjoy how that works out. Um, I, I love. Love the art, all the production. Yeah, it, those are interesting because it's like you've got the, the pigeon in your hand and you see that post office in the meadow. Yeah. And you're like, oh no, but I got these other things I really want to play, but I better get that so that I can get this. And yeah. it feels satisfying when you chain those together. And in that, you have some player interaction with that with those meadow cards. Yeah. Um, you also have it with being able to take other players' actions if they have open spots um, and then them getting... Uh, do you like that part? I do. I do, but it doesn't... It's not like... It doesn't play out all that often in the games that I play. I mean, it does when you have cards, but there's just not a ton of those cards, those open cards. So anyway, I really love this game. But also the same thing I said about Imperial uh, Empires of the North was how the game ramps up with the, with the production from the worker placement wheel. Same thing in this one. Like you at the beginning, your turns, you know, you're only going to take a couple turns and that's mostly going to be just placing those workers, and then maybe playing one card. That might be your whole round. By the time you get to the end of it, the you've game. got so much engine built with the resources that you're getting and the cards that you can play out. But you can, you max out at 15 mm -hmm. cards that you can play out on the board. But I love that part about it. It just ramps up. and like By the end of the game, you're doing a lot of stuff, and yeah. I really, really enjoy that. You're trying to figure out how to kick some of the cards out a lot of times, depending on how you've played. Yeah. Unfortunately, I have all the expansion stuff for this, and I've, I've played Pearlbrook, which I enjoy. It's not, you know, the most amazing expansion ever, but I still enjoy it. But I've not played these other ones, unfortunately. So I really got to get those to the table. Uh, there's just too much stuff that we've been playing lately. So anyway, that is Everdale. There you My go. number s eight. S eight. Yeah. Seven. No, it's number your eight. It's number your eight. Number your eight. <laughs> That's right. You're right. Number it's eight. Your number That's eight. Right. <laughs> All right. So my number seven, we've gone to the depths of the sea. We've gone to Birmingham. Now we're going out of this world. T -t 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 terraforming Mars. Cosmic Encounters. Boom, boom. 
What a game. What a game. I remember the first time I played Terraforming Mars. I thought... First, I was intimidated. Can I be honest? This has been a while since I played this game. I was a little intimidated thinking, man, there's going to be a lot to this game. And while there is a ton of cards... That's a beautiful picture. And a ridiculous vari variability to this game. Look at that. I remember thinking, it is good. <laughs> it wasn't that hard to teach and to wrap my mind around. Mm -hmm. And I loved it. I was like, this game is so stinking good. And guess what? I still feel like this game is so stinking good. This is a game that I've actually taught. I'm not saying I recommend it, but I have taught to gateway people. I was about to say, can you? Can this be a gateway game? I, it's, it's, I, I have done it. I think it. so. I, I mean... I talked to my friend's 14-year-old, and he didn't come in last place. And he doesn't play games all the time. And I was like, I was blown away by like, wow, he actually understands this. He knows what's going on. And it's because of the brilliance... Not the look of the cards, which I'm not a fan of, but the brilliance or the of the look cards. Of anything. Okay. Because they, you just do what it says. Add to this, blah blah blah. You, you know what I mean? You have to have this. It's, it's not complicated because if you can just read what it says, then you know what you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And I think that's and again the variability of this game is through the roof. I always am interested in playing this game. I always want to play it. I'm and with you. Player this interaction on the board is great too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's good. It's, it's just great. So many different ways, like yeah. directions that you can go in this game. Focusing on the board, focusing on victory point cards, focusing on action cards. You know, there's a lot of things that you can do. This game's amazing. You're right. You got this thing uh, looking spiffy. I do have the. I don't. I did not do the Kickstarter with all the fancy stuff, but I, I've got 3D printed tiles. I can like, I tell you how hugely important disappointed I was about the Kickstarter? <laughs> I was like. When I first heard about it, thinking, oh, they're finally going to redo all the art and make this thing look beautiful, and they didn't. And I'm like, seriously? That's all I'm going to say. That was it. It's serious. Huge. The massive other, disappointment. Everything else looked great. The tiles, all that looked fantastic. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Disappointed. Yep. Well, I, not in the game. Good the thing. The game's amazing. Yeah, good thing. And if you don't have it, that's the way to go, I think. Like, if you didn't have it. Now you missed it, so sorry. Suckers. All right. Well, no, what? No. <laughs> All right. That's what he said whenever... That he... was your number seven. Yeah, your number seven's what? Terraforming Mars. My number seven. I don't know. Let's see. Mansions of Madness. <laughs> Second edition. I don't know nothing about this. I just saw the M.A. on there. I wasn't sure what it was. Mom. Or Mom, Man as, you, uh, as, Mom. as they call it. Mansions of Madness Second Edition is a game that uses an app all right and you are going around the board and you're going to be going to be exploring the mansion i guess it depends on the Ooh, scenario that you're sold. playing yeah <laughs> <laughs> mine's all painted up now um, but you're going to be exploring a mansion and you're going to be the story's going to be developing as you go you might not know exactly necessarily what you need to do um, so you're just kind of exploring and then the story unfolds and you figure out what what you need to do in that this game is so stinking immersive I mean it, it really is now it is a very simple game as far as gameplay goes like you're rolling um, you know you're you're rolling based on what your character how many dice your character allows you to roll so you're gonna roll like a um, basically like you do in D&D &D, like rolling a certain amount of dice for whatever specific character trait that you have kind of like that um, not exactly like D&D, &D, but you get the idea. Dean um, just said that Mansions of Madness is basically D&D. &D. <laughs> it has more than that. It's not. Um, I prefer this to D&D. &D. I said it. I wow. said it. I did. You just, I love this game. Here come the haters. Um, <clears throat> that's just me. But anyway, it, it, there's more than that. Like it is, there are puzzles in the game that show up on the app that you have to figure out as well. Um, like the little slide puzzles and different things. I, I won't go over everything because there's just a lot to this game, but I love the app integration because it's there and it tells the story, you read the story, whatever. But it's not like, if you have one person that can focus on that, everyone else can completely look at the board and never have to look at the app. They're just listening to whatever you have to say. And I, I really enjoy that. I think it's a fantastic game, especially this time of year, Halloween. It's my favorite game to play this time of year because it's, it's just fun exploring a haunted house and try not to go insane. Never played it. Don't ever care to. I'm just kidding. No, actually, I am intrigued by it. Yeah, if you I don't... Would, I would play it, for sure. If you don't care for story, because that's what you're playing for. Like, you're playing for the experience more than you are the actual gameplay. It's not like 
Brass Birmingham or Terraforming Mars. You don't get that kind of gameplay, but if you did, it you would really take away from that storytelling. I game. like those games. They just don't have a lot of staying power sometimes for me personally. Now, this one you has I mean? a lot of scenarios. That's uh, good. There's a lot of expansion stuff. There's a lot of downloadable content that you can get. Um, but again, if this isn't your style, I totally get it. But the people that enjoy these type of games, this is typically high up there, like with Lord of the Rings and some other ones. So anyway, this one's fantastic. Love it. There Mansions of Madness, second edition. All right, that is your number seven. seven. My number six is a game that has, the first time we played this, I gave this an eight out of 10. Now it's like nine out of half, 10 out of 10 for me. This game is brilliant. This game is Teoda Walken. I, City of Gods, love this game. Daniele Tassini knocked it out of the park. Like it's a home run out of the park, out of the neighborhood out of the, um, mm, it's a really good game. <laughs> Maybe you should spend some more talk, time talking about the game. And I just want to talk about how far yeah. the ball is going. You see those, you know, those TV shows or something where someone hits it and it keeps going out and going out until it like hits a satellite dish. Yeah, but you could have said out of this world. Then yeah, but then it done. wouldn't have been as exciting because it needed to keep. I need to stretch as long as possible. That's what I like to do. In this game, the dice are king. You have your dice and you have some simple decisions. You can go up to three spots on this big track around the board. And you can see in that picture right there, those are different spots that you're going to be going to uh, over the course, course of the game. But if you go to a spot where dice already are, you're going to have to pay Coco. Um, if you, or you can use your spot or you can use your dice to go to a spot to gain that. And so you're constantly having this how do I use my resources I'm gaining most efficiently to do different things? It's point salad. You can go up tracks. You can build a pyramid there in the middle, which is so satisfying. You can build, um, oh my gosh, I played this game a hundred times, the something of the dead or whatever. Uh, the the little buildings that you, that you can build and you go up the track of the dead or whatever that is there. Um, the expansions are fantastic with this game. It's just, for me, it's just decision, just brilliant decisions, super fun to play. I love this game. And you don't. I don't love it. I don't. I don't dislike it. I think it was fine. Um, it, you don't need, you know, my validation at all. Oh, I don't. Most everybody. I have plenty of other people's validation. Love, love this game. There are a lot of people that absolutely love this game. And now that it's on Board Game Arena, I see people that are on there, you know, really playing it all the time. I would like to go back and revisit this one. Um, the thing that I didn't like was the forgetfulness that I had in this game, like this thing triggers this thing and this thing triggers this thing. And I typically would forget the things and then have to go back and say, oh wait, I forgot to do that. And I think I just, the easiest thing is, too much. Excuse, is the um, little engine building element that you can have and you forget like the yes. bonuses that you get uh -huh. when you go to the spots. And I'll admit, I still sometimes forget, oh yeah, shoot, I forget that I get um, you know, a gold or something when I go to the spot or an extra resource when I go there. So, but still it's, man, there's satisfying com combos in this game. It's really great. It's great. Yep. Just love this thing. Yeah, I, you know, there's a lot of games. So I don't, I don't feel the need to like have to go back and play this one. But this one, because everyone loves it so much, maybe I was just like in a bad phase of my life. It was during like, a con that you played this, which you never know. Multiple times, but I mean, I, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, again, I liked it. I just didn't love it. It just didn't, just didn't do it for me. Just so. love this game. That's my number six. All right, my Tear number six is a Stefan Feld game, the best Stefan Feld game mm. out there. No doubt, no question. Castles of Burgundy. Disagree with that statement, but I still like the game. It's my turn to talk. No <laughs> doubt, there's no question, this is his finest masterpiece. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Castles of Burgundy is- A lot of, most people would agree with you. Yeah. So. Yeah, um, I, yeah, they would, but there's, I mean, he does a lot of really good games, which yeah. I, I, I like that, you know, a lot of people like different games that he has. Um, but Castles of Burgundy, you are going to be rolling your dice and you're going to be taking actions with those dice. Let me see if I can find a board, um, a better picture with that. I'm sure there's billions Don't you of... hate when you're filming it and it's like <laughs> going through a million pictures oh of stuff Oh my goodness that you... gracious. All right. Like just show me the board. That's like right. The main part of the game. <laughs> so a lot of what you're going to be doing is, let's say I have a six and I can go into the, or you can see a four. So let's say I roll a four, I can take a tile from this four location. I can also place that tile in a four spot onto my player board um, if from my your, board. If it's yeah. yeah, if it's on your board, you can sell goods. You can do lots of different things. You can um, also mitigate those dice rolls with your workers to change the value. Uh, it's it's a really simple game. 
I think this is a gateway game, kind of in that same vein that you were talking about, Terraforming Mars, but I think this is even easier. I've taught this to a lot of people that pick it up pretty well um, because the actions the, are fairly simple. The hardest part about it is knowing what all the buildings do. Yeah, so I, my recommendation is if you have this game to print out an overview sheet that shows yeah. you all those buildings and all the science tiles, I, I, I think that helps with that a lot. So everybody has their own sheet that they're looking at. They can see what everything does. This is just a fantastic game. I love it. And I've played this maybe more than most any game that I'll talk about today. If I, Yeah, for sure. More than any other game I've played, um, Castles of Burgundy. It's wow. just fantastic. I love it. There you go. I also it's love it at lower player count. I don't love it at four players. I'll say that. It takes too long. To in, unless around. everyone really knows it. But it could be a really long game at that point. Yeah. You can play a two-player game in like 40 minutes for people that know it. Yep. 40? That seems a little... Maybe. Me and my buddy T, maybe we play like this game. Hour. It takes us 40 minutes. Okay. Because we know it really well. Is You you speak of tea. Is 45. This, is this iced tea? Iced tea. Are you friends with iced well, tea? I, you don't want to use his full name. You're just being modest. <laughs> I'm trying to pr protect him, you know? I would too. Yeah. I would too. All right. So that is your number six. My number five is a game. Dean. It was my number... He, I, he knows this. I'm very we did disappointed this on the podcast. In this one. Yeah, this was my number one last year, and it has slipped down to number five. Still a brilliant game, Concordia. All right. So first of all, this game is great. It has great player interaction on the board as you're moving around and you're setting up your cities and how a team can place in where I built a city, but guess what? It's going to cost him more now. And so trying to get to the spots that you want to get to before other people, brilliant. The way that you use these tiles up top, and I can't remember what the action is. That's ridiculous. I played this so many times. Um, I don't know the name of all the, the cards I, either. I, That's well, I can't, I can't remember what it's the... Yeah, anyways, whatever. The way that you're going out and you're flipping over those tiles and, and, and setting off resources in a particular area, but oh no, Dean's going to get some if I do it too, and is this the right time to do it? Brilliant, right? The simple thing right there on your board of when you get a colonist, it now opens up another spot that you can hold more goods, and that's hugely important. Brilliant. But my favorite part about this is simply the card play. It's you're going up and you're look, you're picking which cards that you want. You're purchasing cards, and they have in-game scoring and an action associated with them. So you may go for the action. You may be like, oh, I'm gonna really need this action in my deck um, because you can use that action, of course. Or you may be like, you know what? I've got to have that in-game scoring because I'm heading in this direction, and so I've got to go ahead and grab that. Will Dean get it before me? Is it worth paying the really expensive stuff, right, to go and grab that card because I know he wants it as well? Really good. Salsa is a fantastic expansion for this. Adds a other layer of engine building. Really like this game. Also like, lastly, that I can bring this out. This is weighted to three. I can bring this out with people who don't play games all the time. Mm -hmm. And they can play it. Actually, lastly, you can play the Venus version as well, which is great. 2v2 in a board game. That doesn't happen all the time, and it's done really well. There you go. Unless this game's your number one. I... I I'm disappointed. No, I mean it's it's slipped a little bit um, just because there's uh, there's I've got some, there's some really good games on this list. This is ranked number 17 overall. I I, that's, I totally understand it. There's just some games I feel like I've been playing, and I I kept asking myself when I made this list, what do I want to play more? Right now, if I was going to sit down at the table and play a game, I would pick these four ahead of it. Still would right now in this very moment, but I still absolutely love Concordia. Concordia is a fantastic game. You're absolutely right about that. And I, I've only played the base game a bunch, but I've I've never played the, and I don't think, yeah, none of the expansion material um, for this game, but I'd really like to, because I feel like it's, you, you say a lot of good things, Salsa and, and uh, Venus especially, I would like to try. Yes. I, I, I'm interested, I'm always interested in team games anyway. I'm not saying they're always good, I'm just always intrigued by them, and this is one that I really want to check out. So, you Concordia. Number five. You're number five. Give me your number five, show me your life. My number five is a game that came out not that long ago. This was a 2019 wow. release that's Number tapestry. five overall. Mm -hmm. Whoa. Yep. It's a good game. Tapestry is, uh, I think it is. Now I know a lot of people that don't really care for this game, uh, but Tapestry- and You know what those people can do? Oh no, don't, don't go there. Don't, don't I was stoop just to their level. I was just taking up for you. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I don't need validation if I like a game. I don't care what people think. I do. Okay. All right. I need the people to tell me that my 
choices are a good choice or I will retract my choice. Right now, I will take Concordia off my list if no one else likes it. Wow, really? Nope. Okay, I think you will. My goodness, I can't find a picture of just the like main board. Okay. Here's the I was track. trying to I was here's trying the, to stall for you. Here's the science track. <laughs> on this game, all you're going to be doing is moving up one spot on the track. Um, that's, that's it. it. On four different tracks. That's it. One's the science, one's military, one's the uh, technology, technology, and then the other one is the uh, exploration. The exploration. There we go. The the blue track. And on uh, when you do that, uh, science is going to let you move up on other tracks mostly. Um, but you're also going to be placing your buildings out onto your board so you have a little bit of this uh those are probably really cool pictures uh, -huh. uh but i need to find a better um you want a so top angle on your on your board now this is the board without the buildings but you're going to be filling in the board um, that will allow you to get victory points it'll also allow you to get resources as you fill up the little squares um, but you're essentially trying to fill that up as much as you can you got the military option where you're trying to conquer these lands and when you put explore and conquer so when you explore you're going to gain these resources uh, conquering will allow you to get uh, victory points and, and to do different things as well. Um, there's card play with the tapestry card. You have your, um, everyone has their special ability with their civilization cards. You have the technology cards that also allow you to get different things. And there's mm -hmm. a, a, it's a very simple game, I think, because again, you're just moving up on the track and then doing what it says. And everybody, you can get a player, I, I think I probably had to print these out. I don't know if everybody has a player board, um, a overview board to show you what all the spots do but there is a paper that shows yeah. what all the spots do so it's be really simple the gameplay of this one but i've really really enjoyed it i've just got the expansion like within the last few days and i'm really looking forward to get that you one can't to wait table. to play that yeah i can't i love this game so much it's fantastic for me <clears throat> yeah i actually like it quite a bit too it's on my top 50 for a game that came out last year i don't like it as much as dean does but i think it's really good um there's some things I don't like about it with some of the, with the tapestry cards and the way you only get one to start off or whatever. How that is it to one that you start off with? Yeah. When yeah. You get a pick. Yeah. yeah. It's like uh, you can. I don't like the way that that kind of works. But besides that, you can get more in that first round before you have to play. You that, can. But you yeah. can. I don't. I, I, that's not my favorite, but I do like the game a lot. Yeah. No. And also, when the game came out, the uh, factions weren't necessarily. They weren't. They weren't balanced. Um, over time, Jamie has tried to balance those out um, and, and came up with some uh, some sheets that show you how those balance out. I think that's great. I don't know how balanced they are, but I think some are easier to play with newer players. Some are more difficult. And so you can actually try to balance the game with those more difficult ones with a player that's played a lot more. Yeah. You can also score a lot of points in this game, and you can absolutely crush people in yes, this you game. Can. So you can. love Tapestry. I want to go play this one right now. Yeah, I enjoy it a lot. Here we go. All right, there you go. It's me Ooh, it's old squeaky. It's me leaving banging the on the old studio. squeaky there. All right, so that is your number five. My number four is Dean's number ten. And speaking of a game that just came out last year that has That's skyrocketed right. to the top ten, Dean, two games last year are in your top ten. That's mm -hmm. crazy. Yep. One game is in my top ten from last year, and that is I have no qualms about it. Glenmore 2 Chronicles! Yeah, I'm gonna chronicle your oh. Glenmore. There it is. I, that is not where it is. That's exactly right. This game is absolutely, listen to me, it's absolutely fantastic. You are right about that. Um, this game has the beautiful rondelle in the middle that leads to those grueling decisions do I jump forward way ahead to get this tile I want so bad, but it's going to give Dean two or three turns, potentially. However, whoever has the most tiles is actually bad in this game. So maybe I go forward and go, well, Dean doesn't want to take too many tiles, because if he does, he's going to lose some points at the end of the game. Beautiful overbuild tiles in this game. I love those Look at that. You overbuild it. Those are fantastic. You build. Those them. are not in the box. No, they're not. But they're. Fantastic. I wish they were in my box. My goodness, those are great. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. You're like, I got a hundred bucks for whoever's gonna give me those right now. <laughs> <laughs> for four. Little... Over. I know the overbuild tiles are great. The production of this game, though they Off don't the have chain. those, is so great. Um, the engine building is so great. The way you place the tiles. When you place a tile, it sets off all the tiles touching it. it. Is so great. If you haven't played this game, I feel like I'm an advocate for this because this has actually gone up to 303 overall. This is ra rated 8.1. It's because the people who have played this game, a lot of people, 
recognize, I believe, the brilliance of this game. Yeah. Matthias Kramer had Glenmore sat back and said, for years, how is this game better? I'm mm -hmm. gonna make this game better. And then they added all these chronicles that make the variability go, without the chronicles, it wouldn't be here. No yeah. doubt, it would not be at all on my top 10. Not even close, but when you add those chronicles, it, ch it just gives you so much variability in this game, and it's awesome. Mix them together, don't, just play one, whatever you wanna do. Yeah, yeah, I really enjoyed Glenmore 1. I thought it was a lot of fun. The changes they made just to the base game alone were great. I mean, great enough to, to rise it up, maybe even to the top 50, I would say. But then, like you said, you throw in those Chronicles. Um, there is so much variability in this game. I'm not sure why this game doesn't have the same hype as I that matches ours. Like, we're really stoked on this game, but I just don't hear this one talked about enough. But then when I hear people that are like, okay, I'll try it, and they love it. Yeah. Um, I love so many things about this game, but it's... <clears throat> It is, even again, just that tile placement with things triggering around it, just that base great, huh? mechanism I think is really cool. Love and you got to move your little Scotsman around to be yep. able to place the tiles, and so you got to think about how that happens. But then also, I really like, I failed to mention one of the things I like about it the most is the way it scores every round based on how much whiskey you have, based on how many the personality tile, uh, cards you have or tiles you have and all that stuff. So like... You have really got to be paying attention to your opponents in this game. Yeah. So it's like one of those things where it's not a lot of nasty. I mean, they can take a tile that you want, but the way they're playing and the way you're playing, super player interaction. Yeah. Super. Remember when we played with Jonathan that one time and we both just did terrible because mm -hmm. we just let you, we were competing. Yeah. And we let um, him have a couple things and he just ran with it and destroyed us. Yeah. That was some dumb playing. It, <laughs> it definitely was. Even in the two player game of this, you know, I, if if you have an extra like dummy thing that you do in a two player game, oftentimes I don't like that. Glenn Moore, all you do is roll a die and take out a tile, which is super, super simple and it makes sense because, you know, it very much emulates having that other player at the table. So anyway. Great theme. Check this one out. It's it is good. way worth it. That's 10, my 10, your four. four. Mm -hmm. Okay, so my number four is uh, one that's dropped a little bit for me. It is the highest deck builder I have on here. I believe that is Baseball Highlights 2045. That's why I called you last night. I called you on the t telephone, the cellular phone. On the telly. And it was because yesterday we did a podcast of our top um, card drafting games. How was that not on your top five? Did you forget? No, I didn't forget. This is more of a deck builder for me than it is card drafting. Card drafting, yeah, we'll get into that another time. But okay. For me, it's the deck builder. This is one Meeple of Town my, Games podcast. It's, gonna it's, play, it's, it's gonna one play of the right best now. deck builders out there. But I will say this. So I love this game so much. I love how the uh, how the cards play out, like how you're moving around the bases, how you really have to not just plan for your offense you have to plan for your defense you have to try to anticipate what the other players have or what they're going to play sometimes you know what they have in their hand but you still don't know when they're going to play it or if they even kept it you know they might have put it in the uh, as a designated hitter or something like that's that that's your friend model t um you play this game with t i do actually yes uh, so i have a group of Guys that I get together with once a year, and we have about eight of us, and we typically play a tournament of this. Now, I that will say this great. again. I say that this a great. lot. This game is fantastic, just the game alone. But why it is this high on my list is because getting a group of people together to play in a tournament for this game is amazing. It is so much fun. You're continually building up your team. Um, you might lose a game, and you might purposefully, honestly, purposefully lose a game so, so that monies. you can have more money, so you can buy better players to set yourself up for you know for Ooh, a better future. You have little minis like that? I do not. No, uh, that is pretty cool, but that's that's overkill. How is it overkill? <laughs> I do have the. How uh, could you, Dean? I do have custom meeples. For the this component game. master call something overkill. I'm saying that so I don't talk myself into wanting those. <laughs> um, anyway, I love this game, but again, for that tournament play especially, I think this is fantastic. I used to, I like um, football highlights too, but nowhere near as much as nah, what I like baseball this highlights. This is way better. Yeah. I really want to play this game with you. We have never played this game together. Nope, we've not. This is one that I would like to walk out right now and play against you mm -hmm. and smear your face in the oh my mud of the infield and then take the grass of the outfield and dollop it on your head. As you lay there, like this. Baseball highlights 2045. That is my number three game. Four game. Four game. Ready? 
I don't even know what's happening. What's your number three? <laughs> uh, this, is, this is called moving along. <laughs> All right, John's number three <laughs> is a game by either Uwe Rosenberg or Alexander Pfister, I'm guessing. Nailed it. Great Western Trail, Alexander Pfister. This game is brilliant. This game was my number two last year. Honestly, number two and number three, I don't care. They're, it's number two A and two B. How is this better than Concordia? That's, <laughs> that's a reference to, did we, did that happen on the YouTubes? Uh, or no, on the, the podcast. podcast. It was a podcast, yeah. Okay. Um, anywho, this <laughs> game is absolutely fantastic. It has a cool deck building element. And who knew that building a deck of cattle would be so much fun. <laughs> That's right. It is a dead gum blast. I love how you put the buildings out. Dean's got the board there. You're putting buildings out to where you're moving up this, you know, going through the wild west or whatever. And when you get to your building, you're doing an action. And when you get to the end of the track, you are sending your cattle off on a train. And that is a huge part of the money you get, of the can be, of the end game scoring. This game is just so fun. It's so fun to build up your buildings as they progress, but also like the pacing of the game is, is what I think I like the most about it. I like this game at two players actually quite a bit. I mean, I can, my wife and I play this all the time. It just feels silky smooth. I play like Concordia does. Play a card, do an action. It doesn't generally take that long. Even at the end of the track, it doesn't take that long. It just feels like it's got a really good flow to the game. And I just really like everything about it. The Rails to the North expansion is brilliant. I absolutely love that. Dean, you have played this game. I, this is my top 50, yeah. yeah I, um, I prefer uh, Maracaibo slightly, but I still, mainly because like you have so many other elements. This one, it's just the same static game that you're playing. The, I mean, the, the buildings change and all that. I'm not complaining about that. I'm just saying the reason why I like Maracaibo more is because it adds a lot more variability and the staying power is a lot higher than that one, I think. Maybe. Not, Not maybe. To me. It is. For sure. Definitely. Great Western Trail is better. But I love Maracaibo, as you have seen on my list. Yeah. Both of these games are fantastic. I love uh, using my Gus Chicken voice when I play this game. It's so good. You have your player board that you're losing, taking little discs off and you're getting more powerful as the game progresses. You just feel like you're getting more powerful and uh, just it feels so good. It does. Uh, now, the player interaction is nice in this game, too. Iconography is tough the first time you play this one, I think. it's. It, it, I don't think it's bad. It's just... A lot. Mm. It's a lot. It, for some reason, it was not too bad for me, I felt like, but a lot of people complained, so I won't argue with you there. Yep. Maybe because I spent so much time pouring over the rule book, it was easier for me to grasp. That That's could probably be. why. Yeah. Okay, my number three is another Stonemeyer game that probably wow. a lot of people have You're as their Stonemeyer number only. one. He hates when I say that. <laughs> I don't mind you saying that. Um, especially when we're Would looking at Would that be your, a Stomer? When you look or at a your, Stoner? Top 10 and all a, of the... You're a stoner. Same designer. Scythe. Scythe uh, is an amazing game. It's fantastic. Uh, on Scythe, you each have your own player board, and you're only moving the pawn over to another spot to take the actions on that player That's board. It. And it's got actions... Oh, what just happened? I guess I just zoomed in on that. Oh, Whoa, oh goodness gracious. On? Oh, boy. Um, you... Can take the top action or the bottom act or both top or bottom or both and um i sorry i'm all out of whack now that i zoomed in on this picture so but the the play a flustered i am a little flustered right now the play of it's super simple though like you're just going to be moving that taking an action or two and then you're going to be passing it on to the next player and on your turn your next turn, you put it on another spot unless you have the faction that allows you to take that same action twice. Um, and this has the feeling like this should be a war game, area control game, and it is, but it's more like a Cold War there's game. A lot more like too. there's the threat of battle, oftentimes more than the actual battle. You can play a whole game of this and not have a battle. Although more than likely, you're at least going to have a few in there. Especially for that center spot. That's right. But when you battle, it's, you know, sometimes not great for you because you're setting yourself up for somebody else to come in and take you out, which is awful. But that's the best when people people battle and then you're wore out. And yeah. You just get to go take that person. out. Yeah. Because you've already spent your combat card, which could be a really good one and spent all of your power. And once your power track's gone, you don't have much power to, yeah. to battle against other players. It's just such a brilliant game. And actually lately... Um, the iOS version of this just came out, and I have been playing this like a lot. bonkers. Really? You know who's not good at this game? Me. Me. 
I'm not good at this game, oh. but man, do I love it so much. It's so good. So good. <clears throat> it barely made my top 50. I enjoy it. Um, yeah, I enjoy it. I think it's a fun game for sure. I mean, if it made my top 50, I quite, I do enjoy it a lot, but it's not super, not, not quite as high as it is for you. Nope. The theme is really neat. Oh, Frito. It is. And I'm not a big theme guy, but I do, and that's, but I still like theme, and I like that theme quite a bit. Put some theme music on in the background. You kind of feel like you're you're in this alternate post post war what kind of reality in Eastern. What are you Europe? talking about? What kind of theme music? You like playing? you know, like old uh, folk Eastern European music. That's a good answer. Yeah. Okay, I was expecting you to say something crazy. The app plays that but music in the, the thing background. Thing is, if it's you. an alternate timeline, then we don't know what the music would have been like. Oh, we do. It could have been techno. <laughs> it's all accordions <laughs> all the time. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's right. my number three, Scythe, amazing game. My number two is a, guess who the designer is? Alexander Pfister or Uwe Rosenberg? <laughs> guess who the artist is? Oh my goodness gracious, I'm pulling it up. Clemens Franz! Clemens Franz. Uwe Rosenberg, La Havre. This game is just an economic blast. It's pretty simple. I mean, seriously, you are go here. Can you pull up? There you go. You're either going to take one of these spots and you're going to go for the offer. You see those. It's so tempting. Sometimes you really want that, like that wood offer right there. There's a lot of wood there and you can do some good stuff with the wood and you take that offer and that's your whole turn. Or you put your disc onto a worker plate onto a card that either you have in your tableau or, or, to Dean's, but if I go to Dean's, I'm gonna to have to pay him something. So oftentimes you're actually happy when people take your buildings because you're getting food or whatever it may be, or you're going um, placing one placing one in the city or the town, and you're just doing a lot of exchanging. Like I'm converting um, clay to bricks. I'm using the bricks to now build this building. I'm getting uh, new ships because a huge part of this is feeding your people. A huge part, which I know you don't always like. Yeah, but it's a it, you have to pay attention to that, and there's like seven <laughs> spots on the board, so you think, okay, I'm gonna have a you know, depending on your player count, you may not have hardly any turns. You may have a couple turns. Boom, boom, the turn's over. I gotta feed. Boom, boom, the turn's over. I'm just being real, and so you have to build a good food engine. You have to build an engine that helps you score points, and the game is so good, so good because there's so much variability in this game, so many paths you can make. Leather, you can ship those goods, you can bake bread. I mean, there's so many things that you can bake and so many satisfying moments of feeling like, I built this engine to do X, Y, or Z, and it feels so satisfying when you're starting to rack up the points uh, because of that. I love this game. I've played the app version of this game and I've, I've enjoyed my plays, but, when you describe it, you think that I would really like this game. I don't no, know. If no, no, I would. no. I don't know if you would. Okay. Because of the feeding. Yeah, and I, it just depends on the feeding. If the feeding is like not the stressor of the game and the thing that it sounds like, like a seems movie. most important. The feeding. The feeding. <laughs> this seems very much like that. Like this it, can be super it, stressful. It always feels that way. The times that I've played it, but I would like to try the physical copy of this one because yeah. I think I might. <clears throat> I think I might like it, but I don't know if I would love this one. It depends on the way the cards come out. It's a huge part of this, which makes, again, the variability go through the roof for me. And the way they come out, the, when that wharf comes out to help you get ships to be able to, um, that's a huge part of engine building for food. If it's buried deep, you may be in trouble. It may. I've played games where it was just felt like really tough to feed my workers. I've played other games where it wasn't so bad. I don't know if you'll love this because of that. Yeah, I love it though. But I know a lot of people do love this game. This is so good. Uh, oftentimes, you know, people's favorite of his. I've heard many people that feel that way. I understand. Lahav. Is it mine? You're number two. Is it my favorite of his? Oh, you don't know. I doubt it. <laughs> Your top ten is all Uva. And it's not. Games. I, I, there is a. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Anyways, go ahead. I, it's fine. You like what you like. I like what I like. Yeah. My number two is a game oh, that yeah. when I first played it, I really enjoyed it. The more I played it, I fell in love with this game. It is right in my wheelhouse. That is Root. Root. Yep, and Root. I you are am Root. Uh, not the first time you made that joke. Is it? No, no. Um, Every time I mention Root. I don't even remember that I've made that joke before. Oh yeah, all the time. 
Really? The thing I love about Root is you are all trying to accomplish the same thing. You're all trying to get 30 points, right? That's, that's the goal of the game is to get those points. But the way that you accomplish that is so different, mm. but also some similarities. Like you are all uh, trying to gain control of these different areas of the board, the clearings in the board, so that you can build buildings, that you can do different things, um, or roost, or whatever your character is building. But the way that you accomplish that is just so radically different. So mm. the Marquis de Cat is the that's the orange cat ones. They start out, they're spread out all over the board. They already have everything, every clearing, except one or two, depending on how many players are playing. They they own all of them. And so you're able to build in those places and they're trying to get wood so they can build buildings because that's how they get points. Then you have the Irie, those blue birds on there, and they are they are programming cards and taking actions. And they're also trying to spread out on the board. But if you are if you're not able to take an action for the cards that you've programmed and they stay in those slots, if you're not able to do that and you haven't planned well, you have to reset and start all over again. Um, your True. your birds stay out there, but your cards reset. You lose some points based on how many bird cards you have in your tableau. Uh, and then there's expansions on top of this. There's you know four characters in that base set which are very different and they play. They're a lot of fun with the expansion. It's amazing. This game is just wonderful. The art is ridiculous in this game, mm. in a good way. In a good way, yep. Yeah, I like this game a lot. This is one that was absolutely on my top 50 because I love it. Um, but I have not got it to the table. My wife does not like this game at all. And Dean, we need to get this to the table. We do. Gosh. And there's there's bots that you can play we in this game that aren't difficult games. either. So you can actually, oh, even in a two-player game, you can have a bot play as the third player. Have so. you played the solo? There's solo on this, right? I have or played the solo. Yeah, you use the bots to do that. That's so. what I thought. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is it pretty good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it is. The bot is, mm, but you can that. also use it for lower player counts to add another player. And so it's super, super simple. And now... I don't know if this was just a Kickstarter thing, but I don't think it was. You can actually use the other characters as the bots. Initially, it was just Marquis de Cat that you're using as a bot. Now you can use any of them. So Word. This game is down. wonderful. Taught this to a lot of people. Teaching it is a bear. And so I recommend, if you want to play this game, having somebody who's played it before teach you how to play it. Because just... Teach you. Not that the rules are bad. It's just a lot. It's It can be overwhelming. It's a great game. Yep. Amazing. Excellent. Amazing game. I'd like game. to get this to the table again. It's yep. been a while. Oh, it's been a while. My number one uh, is uh, a uh, uh, Uwe Rosenberg yes. game. <laughs> oh my God. I know, I know, y'all. Please don't hate. But these, at least the top two, are brilliant games. If you haven't played, you've got to. If you haven't played this game, then you are missing out on a real treat. A real treat. Patchwork. A Feast for Odin. Feast for Odin. All right. Lucky I want to, come here. Come here, Meeple Town. <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably way out of focus now that I keep like, getting up close like this. I just want you to know that I care about you. And I kind of love you, actually. You make things weird. And I want you to do something for yourself right now. If you haven't played A Feast for Odin, I want you to go get it. I want you to go take all your monies because it will cost you a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> that it will. And buy this game. That it will. <clears throat> all right. So a feast for Odin is tons of worker placement spots. <laughs> there are. The first time you play this, it's kind of like Caverna in the sense of there can be an overwhelming thing. And on this game, you can go so many directions. However, you do have occupation cards that can help you point you in directions, which I really like that about this game. I really do. You start off where you can kind of go, all right, I'm going to head in this direction. So it's not just... You know, totally wide open. I like that. Um, but there's so many worker placement spots that you can go to. You can get cattle. You can raise sheep. You're ultimately, though, trying to prime fill this polyomino board, which is so fun to do. And you can only have certain colors next to certain colors. You can take these cards and you can go whaling. You can go raiding. You can go pillaging. And it's brilliant because if I don't usually like a lot of dice rolling in games. However, this feels thematic for me because you roll a dice and if it doesn't work out for you, you get bonuses, you get things for it. So you don't feel like, oh my gosh, my game is over. Because of the dice rolls, I'm gonna lose this game. You're like, okay, that's not great, but I still get these con consolation prizes <coughs> right. and they're solid. So I, I really think that's one of the reasons I like this game is that I feel it does have a, it's not overly thematic, but it does, it's a Euro 
at its core, but does have some theme to it more than some other games. And the upgrading aspect is brilliant. You get this good, you want to upgrade to that good, to this good, and then you're like, yeah, I got that. Now I can put it on, on my board. Yes, I covered up a lot of spots. This game is great. Yeah, great. I, I've great. only played this great. one one time and I really enjoyed my play. Um, not in my top 50 because I, I need to get more plays of it. And this is the one that you think that I will absolutely love given more time to play it. Um, I think playing that first one is very much a learning experience because again, there's a lot there's a lot of those work placement spots, but it, it looks more overwhelming than it actually is because those four spots do the same thing. They, they do just, similar things. Right. Yeah. There's usually just more powerful as you spend more workers. Right, right. Um, but I, I, I enjoyed my play of this. I did not do well my first time. That's why. I could see you know, again, Fields of Arla is kind of my my Uva, like that's the game that all of the like games upgrading are held in that up game? to. I do, yeah. And uh -huh. this is that to uh, kicked up a level because a lot of them can go yeah. like four different levels. So. I love polyomino games as well. Um, yeah, I, I, I think, think I would is... like this one a lot more. This one and Caverna are the ones that I just need to play more or Caverna for the first time, I guess. Yeah, and, I really think you would like them, Deem. This yep. game is so good. All right, now let's talk about an actual thematic Viking game. My That's number true. one. We do have Viking games. Is right. Blood Rage. Wow, okay. That's yeah. right. Interesting that it's rated 8.0 and mine is 8.2. <laughs> Yours is ranked 33 overall and mine is 22. Okay, excellent. What this shows is that John loves to go with the crowd. He's <laughs> a crowd pleaser. <laughs> I'm a homer. For me, I'm going to go against the grain. Go with Blood Rage, which is ranked 33 overall. <laughs> uh, Blood Rage is a very thematic game. Um, in this game, you are drafting cards and those will determine those cards will determine what you're going to do once you get past that drafting phase. So once you have all your cards in your hand, you can do a bunch of stuff. You can pillage. And they're fairly simple. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 They are. They are fairly simple. I, this is not a super complex game either. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> but they'll determine the actions that you'll be able to take. You you can go out on the board. Uh, you can place your um, your warriors or your leader or your monsters if you get them. Place them them out on the board. Then you're going to be pillaging these villages and and gaining the uh, gaining the benefit on that to move up this track so that you'll be able to put more people out on the board or be able to maybe gain more points whenever you win a battle. You can totally whiff on this one and go for the loss. Lo you can go, you can for, go the for the Loki strategy. strategy. Uh -huh. I, the last game I played, I won with that. I noticed I wasn't doing well, and I'm like, all right, time to Loki. <laughs> yeah, which a lot of people thought, especially initially when this but came out. But you gotta out, be low key when you, you do, do it. have to be low key um a lot of people thought that that's overpowered but you just have to be able to in drafting games you can't let people get the cards that they really and then want. don't kill them right if, they, if you know they've got them i mean that's their goal is to die that's right and so don't um you know hate drafting is an important part of this game in order to keep people from doing that low key strategy but there's so many different strategies that you can take in this game. Sorry. I'm, this, there is. I'm well, while you're saying that, choice. while you're looking that up, Dean, I'll say like the first time, remember the first time or two I played this game, I said, aren't there OP cards? I don't know if you remember, but I was like texting you about it. And you're like, if you've never played this game, you will probably lose because there are cards that are super powerful, like some of those Loki cards that mm -hmm. you don't realize they are there. You're like, oh my gosh, how did he score 30 points on this one thing? Um, yeah, for sure. But as you play it more, then you understand, well, I mean, maybe there are cards that are far more powerful than other cards, yes. But if you know that they're in the deck, and it's not that complicated of a deck, then you can know how to defend against it. That's right. Now, you could get some of those cards. That, like, there's a card, for example, that allows you to um, upgrade for uh, for a lot cheaper, right? Yeah. And so you want to get that card if you can get it potentially. but And you might get that before anyone else does, and you might not be able to keep people from doing that if they get it first. Um, but you're not going to win with just one card, right? Like sure. you have to be able sure. to get lots of cards to be able to do the things that you want. And again, just don't let people get those get those cards. The there expansion, uh, especially the the Midgard expansion for this, is a lot of fun. Really, really enjoy it. Uh, I just love this game. It's fun. Everyone I've introduced to seems to really enjoy this one too. It's a a pretty fun hoot and It's a crowd game. crowd pleaser. Yep, for sure. I've been talking about apps that I've been playing lately. Um, Root is a good example of a good app. Blood Rage is not. I don't love the app for Blood Rage, but I still mm. really, really love this game. Blood Rage is my number one game of all time. So wow. that completes it. Our top 50 is done. We did it. Woo! We made it. Wow, we agonized over that, or at least I did. Did no. you? No, I didn't. You just have fun with these. I agonize over them. Okay. I it's fun. I'll lose sleep. I'm like rolling over it, and I go, oh, should Lahav be number two, or should Great Western Trail be number two? Where is that game supposed to go? 
Yeah, I, know. I just I, do. I throw them in a bucket, randomly draw them out, and whatever comes out. You know, that's your list finally makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> All right, tell people how they can get in touch with us. All right, if you're enjoying our channel, we would love for you to hit that subscribe button and hit the bell for notifications if you want to know when we're coming out with new videos. We're MeepleTownGames.com to kind of check out all of our stuff or peep out some MeepleTown swag that I'm not wearing but do have. Swag. At MeepleTown Games on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and BoardGameGeekGuild3407. Thanks for coming down to MeepleTown. Thanks for joining us, and be sure to follow us on Twitter at MeepleTownGames. And connect with us on the Meeple Town Guild, guild number 3407, at boardgamegeek.com. And also subscribe to our podcast and YouTube channel. And until next time, thanks for coming down to Meeple Town.